Hello everyone, how's it going? Doctor Incompetent here, and let's play some Satisfactory, shall we? Here in 2023, continuing our Complete Beginner's Guide with our initial little base here that we built through the onboarding process, and there was some interest in continuing the guide, and so I thought, I love playing Satisfactory, so why not? Well, at this point, once you finish the onboarding, um, you'll start to very easily pick up the pattern of the game, which is that you want to get new technologies built to progress, but you hit certain bottlenecks. So, for example, um, we are running into a major bottleneck at our factory of not having enough power, and this is a very, very common problem at this point in the game. So, usually the game works in such a way that um, if you want to address some significant kind of deficiency within your base, there is a technology on the horizon that you're waiting to construct. And the best way to get to solve that problem is to do the quests. Uh, and right now we're working on the base building milestone. But let's take a look at what we can build at the equipment workshop and... You know, none of these things really do the trick for us, but we are in a position where I'm going to need to say, okay, I've got these systems working. You can see the red lights. We're out of power. I need a bunch of power, and I'm going to open up my personal storage, and we need to start putting items in here to free up inventory space. So I've got some extra, you know, limestone and, and the like. But instead of maybe doing it that way, what if I look at some of the resources that I can build? And you see here we can build storage containers and storage boxes, right? And so we've been building these storage containers to hold, you know, concrete. And we have um, one up here that is... Oh, no, wait a minute. What do you... Yeah, sometimes it's hard to target what you're looking for, but um, this one is holding iron rods, okay? So I need to hold just some of my stuff, though. So I like to push Q and just make a personal storage box. And for now, I suggest putting your personal storage box just somewhere that's easily accessible so when you're about to go do a run, you can go back to it. So I like it. I'm going to put it right here at the base of this tree. This tree is awesome. I'm never going to take it down. Um, not that I can, but it's just a, a fantastic looking tree. And it's a good landmark. And now that I've done that, I'm going to push Q. And I'm going to close my build menu that I opened with Q. I'm going to push E and open my storage box. And I'm just going to start sliding in limestone. And... Um, copper or raw materials that I can't do too much with okay and I'm going to throw in iron or now some of this stuff I will keep I can stack that uh, let's see here I do not need bars this um, I don't believe I need this for now I don't need screws reinforced iron plates I might need okay uh, I definitely don't need power slugs or animal parts. Alright, and then I have uh, three portable miners handy. I don't need three of these right now. I'm just going to take two for the time... Um, uh, put two away for the time being. And I'm going to put the rest of these rods away. So, at this point, I'm going to sort my inventory by clicking this sort button and just put everything in a row. Now, I've got some things just in case I need to construct anything on the fly but I've opened up a lot of space for myself so I can get biomass because that is pretty much what I need right now is just biomass, biomass, biomass. So I'm going to walk out and start picking up leaves everywhere. And so you can just hold down E and then just kind of start walking and aiming and just ripping up the leaves, okay? So this will help us a little bit but also what you can be doing at this point you can push m open up your map and start seeing if there's anything that you want to be charting so this is kind of a nice time to explore fill in your map look for 
what's near you? What's around you on uh, where you have started? Some of you I read in the comments started very near where I started uh, on this map. You might be playing on you know the grassy map instead, uh, but I'm going to roll down here and just take a gander at what is happening resource-wise while I collect leaf upon leaf upon leaf. Remember, um, this guy right here is a good buddy of ours. All right, so let's check our bags, and you see we have 386 leaves already, which is, you know, pretty reasonable. And I'm just going to kind of hold, or I'm going to push shift so we're always running because there is no stamina. I'm just going to run over here, and this is a beautiful place to just kind of run through and gather leaves as we explore. Um, <laughs> and just massively stockpiling some leaves for ourselves. Okay, fantastic. Mm-hmm. All right, here we go. Now, we're doing a very, very good job of just getting copious amount of biomatter, but you can see how this biomass is going to be cumbersome to try and fill up. Like, we can't just sit here and do this forever. I'll pick up these nuts, of course. And let's take a look at the map. And where are we? We're over here. There is our settlement there. So let's head back home. But while we're doing that, might as well gather every leaf in the area. And what I want to do is just get the machines turned back on so that we can see how close we are to completing some of these objectives so that we can make our life uh, a bit easier. Because right now, we can't really leave our home area and have it running and producing things for us while we explore. And we want to always be producing for Fix-It. That's our job here, after all. So I'm going to give it some leaves and just let it go. And let's see here. We need 200 bags of cement, 100 plates, and 100 rods. Okay, so we can easily give it some of this. And how much cement did I say that I have? Okay. Well, we have already made enough to ship this out. So let's go ahead and um, launch this tab for base building. Okay? Milestone reached. You have unlocked several structures aimed to provide the first needed to build basic factory infrastructure and improved overview. Building these will provide a grid for more advanced organizing and sectioning of your factory. Fantastic. So this is true. So we have now um, unlocked uh, the ability to build foundations. So you can see that we have a new tab down here for foundations and we can build um, these square foundations of different heights and these ramps. Now, you might say, well, what's the point of doing that? Can't you just build everything on the ground? Well, you can, but the advantage of building foundations is just like she said, it makes it easier to snap everything into a grid and just produce a more streamlined and um, sensible organization of your buildings. So at some point, you're going to want to start ripping your stuff down and building foundations underneath them to streamline your process and make things a little tidier for yourself. But I'm not necessarily too worried about that at the moment. Everything is working. So we've got some spaghetti and it's happening here. And, you know, especially early on while the te technologies are developing... You have a few paths that you can take here. One approach is to say, I'm just going to leave it as is. It's working. And let your stuff just stay up and running. And by the way, I'm just gathering leaves as I'm discussing this. We're waiting for the pod to come back before we can start researching another. Um, or we're going to choose a different uh, objective or milestone for ourselves and find new technologies. But... One approach is to be like, okay, look, here's the stone. It's coming in, right? I'm making concrete. It's going into this container that I have set here, and it works fine. It might not be the prettiest thing in the world, but it, it works fine. 
and you could leave it like that until uh, it doesn't work. Or you could just leave this here and, you know, go make another base somewhere else and be more organized that time. Another approach would be to just dismantle this whole thing and rebuild it from the ground up using your foundations. And in that approach, you can take, um, without concern, except for your own time, of course, because you get all your resources back when you disassemble. So if you're like, you know what, I don't like how this looks, or I don't think this is going to scale properly when I'm building more things, let's go ahead now and just redo the whole thing. Now, me personally, I take kind of an approach right in the middle where I leave a lot of stuff as is and just let it run. But then as I go and need to build more things, I start to practice and try out new ideas because you're, you get better as a factory designer when you begin practicing. All right, so I'm going to put all these leaves over here and messing around with your foundations and seeing uh, what it takes. Okay, so let's go ahead and select a milestone now. Um, we could select logistics, okay, but we could also go to tier two and see, let's see, part assembly, obstacle clearing, and this is what I want. So I want to do obstacle clearing because this will let us get a chainsaw. So a chainsaw is kind of the de facto solution to biomass for the time being, where you can quickly cut through trees and get way more biomass than just gathering leaves and get better biomass like wood. You can also produce these biofuel rods, which burn much slower and more efficiently than leaves and you have to attend to them less. So this just frees up your time and we get some more inventory slots. So I'm gonna select this particular milestone because this is what I want. And you can look at all the milestones you wish, okay? And you know, choose different ones. And the choice that you make is up to you, of course. But the reason I am choosing that, all right, um, for the time being is because um, this is my problem, which is getting biomass. So I like to pick a milestone that addresses an issue I'm running into with a bottleneck, and that bottleneck is biomass. So I'm going to click obstacle clearing. You can, of course, you know, finish out logistics if you want instead to just move in order. But what is this going to take? Concrete, which we have, cable, and screws. Okay. So that's a good question. Am I producing screws? Well, I'm making um, iron rods, all right? And I'm making plates. So we've got plates coming in here. What's going up top here? And this, uh, this is out of power, all right? So um, we're not smelting anymore because... Um, our other biomass container has run out, or this other burner has run out. So I can give it a little bit of wood to get this going again. And we can look up here and see that um, we have plates on the bottom and we have wire up on top. So what if we need to make something like screws? Okay, and what if we need to make something like cable? So we don't have those processes automated right now. We need to get that going. So, what do those take? All right. We have iron coming in, being turned into ingots, and then this smelter is making us... Now, uh, this is making ingots, which are going out to become rods, okay? And then we also have this right here, which is making ingots, which are going here to make us plates. So we have plates and rods on, but don't we want more than that? Well, of course we do, but we've already run out of power. So you can see <laughs> um, the biomass problem. Now, if I were to follow this up and check out how many rods I have, I have a plenty of rods. So for the time being, 
I can turn this to screws, okay? By changing the recipe and saying, can you make me screws instead? And wait a minute, I can't make screws because this requires rods. So what we need to do then is just continue making rods and we need to make another facility which is a constructor that's going to make us screws. Now screws are something you're going to need so many of. It is mind-boggling. So let's do two things at once. Let's practice building foundations. And I'm going to um, build this, but I'm actually going to go to um, the build menu and I'm going to uh, push five to put this onto our hotbar and I'm going to just build a bunch of foundation on the ground okay so I'm going to just kind of orient this how I like there we go and then I'm going to snap these around so that you can see that we just get this massive square going but let's talk about different build modes so you see when I'm building right now I'm going to build a foundation right in front of me but the R button in the middle of the bottom list of options, it says toggle build mode. And if I push R, I can go to zoop mode, okay? And zoop mode allows me to click here once, okay, to set it. And then I can look off in the distance, moving my cursor up, and I can build this as many foundations as I want ahead of me okay um and so you can see that i can also look this way and build them left or right okay and then it has a multiplier by it telling you how many different pieces of foundation you're going to build in the direction that you're looking and how many resources it's going to take so i'm going to build this now there's a creature in the way so we have to wait for that bird to move out of the way i'm going to build this five Okay, and I'm going to build this one five once this bird moves out of the way. You can, of course, go get that bird out of the way if you want, um, but it should eventually... I'll just build it two for now. I'm a peaceful person, so I don't want to go just annihilate this bird. I'm just going to kind of try to get it to get out of the way. Hey, bird. Oh, it's eating. Okay, here. Can you clear out? There you go, buddy. All right, and I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. And five, and uh, we are not on zoop mode anymore, so I just I built one, right? I'm on ver uh, vertical build mode, actually, which lets me stack them up. So that's pretty funny. Uh, but no, I need to go uh, to default and back to zoop. And zoop lets you build them out. And there we go. Okay, now notice I built these longer and they are just going through the ground, okay? So this kind of thing that happens and uh, it's not the end of the world, but now we have a nice big flat space to work on and I'm actually going to build just one more strip of this and I'm going to go ahead, I want to go zoop and I want to build it here and build it five there. And now you can see that um, we have a bit of a foundation to work from. It's not quite, you know, square or anything, and there's rocks poking out of it, but that is okay. You can build over these if you want without problem. Now I'm going to go ahead and go to production, and we need constructors, right? So I want a constructor that's going to build me screws, and I want that constructor to be connected to a storage facility immediately okay but i don't have enough reinforced iron plates so i'm going to need to make some of those reinforced iron plates and that brings to mind another resource that i need to automate which is reinforced iron plates now i can't make these because i don't have any screws so ironically we need screws badly so i'm gonna make some screws
Okay, so now, um, I'm gonna just stop, and I can make some reinforced iron plates. So I'm gonna make a, uh, a few of these. These are things that you need a ton of, and, you know, you really can't overstate that. I'll finish making this last one. There we go. Six is fine for now. I'll push escape. And now, in our new little practice factory area with a factory floor, I'm going to build a constructor. And I'm going to have it where, let's just kind of say, all right, on this side, constructor, you will have the resources coming in all right and you can see how i've snapped it right it is basically sitting on top of these foundation now if you'll notice here it actually is going to the right a little bit so i'm going to um just get rid of this i suppose and let's see I'm going to dismantle it with F and go ahead and bring this up. And I want to build it right in the middle of my foundation just to practice getting it nice and tidy. So you can see the square that we're building that's in white around the constructor. We can line that up with the grid of the of the uh, foundation itself just to, you know, get this perfectly aligned to how I am want this to be. And let's just set it here. Okay, and it will set squarely on this, and it comes out. And then what we want to build is a, a storage container for this. Okay? And I'm going to build this also on our foundation. And remember, um, you can kind of just hold control, and then you'll see the green lines that will show up and be anchoring these together. Okay? And I want to put this very, very close, like that. So that it doesn't require a lot of feeding. All right. And then now we have a nice straight system. I'm going to configure this to make screws. Okay. And now um, what I need to do is feed rods into this. So one option I would have um, is to just run a belt from here to the other side of this storage container that I have um, but we don't have enough plates well we have plates in uh, over here so let's go get them you see everything is at a halt because we have no biomass unfortunately I'm gonna take uh, these plates and I'll just take out this whole stack right here and just kind of calmly walk and I'm gonna build a belt that goes from the storage container with our rods okay over to our facility here and then now we need to connect this to the power so we're going to build a wire and let's see how is this one doing perfect and now um that is hooked up but again we need more biomass to get it going so you can see that like um biomass is just still you know going to be our our large bugaboo as we want to get our factory scaling up so i'm going to go around and just get more biomass another option you have if you don't like going around getting biomass is of course to just take the resources that you've already constructed and stand at the crafting bench and manually build what you need to develop the chainsaw for example So we would need like 500 screws. And you could, of course, do that if you like. All right, I'm going to run back over here. And let's start giving some people some power of some kind. So uh, I'm going to just give it these leaves and I'll give it these petals. And I'm going to give this uh, that. Oh, our fuse broke. Right. Okay, so we got some mail. All right. Um, so let's open the mail. And let's see. In the inbox, it says power circuit notification. So this is telling us that we blew a fuse. And the reason that we blew a fuse is because 
I put I'm putting too much load on um, one of my sides so you can see that um, this is only capable of producing 20 and I was asking for 24 so what I need to do is uh, take this push F and get this line off of there okay and then push Q and then um, Now this isn't working because it has no fuel, but this is uh, ready to be turned back on again. And if you blow a fuse, you have to go over here to the fuse box. You have to go to the burner that blew the fuse, okay? Um, this one, and then you have to grab it and just kind of drag it down and it'll turn back on. Okay, so given that, um, let's take a look at this pile here, see if we have anything uh, interesting. I'm going to take out these ingots, all right, and I'm going to use these, and let's go ahead and do exactly what I said. So we need a hundred cable, all right. So to make cable, um, we need wire, all right. So wire is absolutely no problem for us. We should have a ton saved up over here, and we do. I'm actually going to take out this stack of 500 and shoot this excess back. I like to have a full stack of things. Now, from here, you can see that now I can make uh, so much cable, it's ridiculous. But I'm just going to make enough cable to get 100. So I'm just going to watch this relevant item screen. And um, once we get 100 here to match that, I will just push spacebar again. There we go. Um, or I'll click the craft hammer, rather, and stop it. Okay, we have 100 here. We have the cement that we need as well um, in storage. And now it's time to just make screws. Okay, so I'm just going to... Um, there we go, push spacebar, and get screws crafting. And we're going to need to get more rods, but we have those anyway. Now I'm doing this just to demonstrate to you that it's another option. And it's just kind of like what you choose to do. You could, of course, if you find it more fun to go gather biomass, do it that way. And, you know, you can see that it's a little bit tedious at this point, and this is why we want to get our power system uh, scaled up to accommodate more machines and also a little bit less reliant on us maintaining it every two seconds. So now we have a, a bunch of screws, okay, but we need rods. And let's go ahead and check, did you make any screws yet? You didn't. Um, and you were trying to, but you kind of ran out of power. And that's fine. So what we're going to do is just walk up here and check how many rods do we have. We have plenty. I'm going to take all of the rods out of here. In fact, ah, I guess I left some. And then come back and um, make screws. And you're making four at a time. One rod into four screws. So you can see that this number will fill up rather quickly. And give us the 500 that we need to launch this milestone and build ourselves a chainsaw. With a chainsaw, we can run around chopping down trees and um, be in uh, a pretty glorious position however i'm gonna stop crafting this because we have the screws you'll see that there's a another funny little hiccup anyway i'm gonna give it everything that it needs here and i need more concrete uh which i have okay and we'll launch that out there and we've got obstacle Biostone clearing reached. complete biofuel will ensure maximum efficiency of biomass burners to aid in biofuel production, you are now capable of removing foliage that consists primarily of wood. Additionally, R&D inflated your pocket dimension. So we can carry more stuff. Our pocket dimension has increased, and now we can come over here to the equipment workshop and craft a chainsaw. We just need screws, cables, uh, and one more reinforced iron plate. So again, um, we need uh, a ton of screws to get this done, which is what I was trying to tell you about 
how many screws you need is um, pretty intense. So if we want to do that, all right, let's go ahead and actually get some power online because we're going to need a few different parts. So I'm going to kind of come back here and just get us a bunch of leaves so that we can uh, slowly but surely... provide electricity to our base and get uh, some of this stuff done because we're almost there, right? And the game likes to do this. It likes to make you feel pain as you walk around doing something, you know, like this and then feel sweet relief when you finally do um, get things moving again. All right, so I'm going to actually go in my inventory and I'm going to uh, just right click that stack to split it because I want to put some here and I want to put uh, the rest here and then I'm going to uh, connect uh, let's see where's your rod right here okay I need to need to build another rod that goes here and then connect this and this and then connect this all the way to this and let's see I'll build a pole uh, here and then we can just connect this pole oops there we go to this and then this should turn on over here and start making us some screws all right now, we could also, while this is happening, start getting cable built. Oh, and you can see here comes... This is always fun to watch. You can see the pod coming back in to land on our hub. And it's docking in there, and then we'll be ready to pick another objective for ourselves. Um, and I think we should just do logistics at this point, get this done... All right, so we need some plates, but for that, we're going to need screws, okay? And we need some cable, so let's just build cable for a moment. Okay, and let's just double check what we need for the chainsaw. We've got plenty of cable. We just need screws and reinforced iron plates. So everything is building up here, and you can see we already have uh, some screws ready to go. So I'm going to walk over here, and I'm going to build a reinforced iron plate, just one. And now we're just going to build screws. This will let us build the chainsaw. And once we get the chainsaw built, our lives will... Um, be a little bit smoother it's actually a lot smoother uh, in my opinion it, when I first was playing this game gathering biomass I was like oh this is awful and it's one of the more tedious things that you do but luckily the game is I think they're doing it just to show you how powerful your systems of production can be by relieving you of that responsibility all right so I'm gonna, gonna go over here and um, make a chainsaw. Alright. So now we have a chainsaw. Okay. And I can go over here and I can put the chainsaw in my hand. Okay. But when you use the chainsaw, you'll see that you can't use it until it has power. Um, unfortunately. And so it needs fuel. It needs these special um like biofuel rods basically so we're going to make a constructor i'm going to just switch what's in my hand i'm going to build a constructor uh right next to this and oh we need um plates for that okay and let's go ahead and just switch what we're holding all right, so we need some more plates. And 
as you progress in the game further and further, making stuff manually becomes uh, far less of a thing. All right, I just pushed F to dismantle, but then used middle mouse click to pipette that. And I'm just going to put it right next to it. So you can see how I just put it right next to it here, and it's in the exact same position. And this is how you can start to make a grid for yourself. I'm going to push F, and I'm going to just um, go ahead and use the middle mouse button to pipette that. And I'm going to put this exactly in the same spot to kind of start, you know, making a little grid for myself. Now, the only reason that that's... Um, actually, I'm going to destroy that. It would be nice if you could do that, but these storage containers are a little bit smaller than the constructor itself. So, uh, pipetting it, or you have to kind of um, actually use control and snap it to the structure that you're building with, like this. There you go, and that should work. And then I'm gonna just kind of put this out here. Okay, and what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna say I need solid biofuel here, and it just needs biomass to get that, all right? So biomass is something that we need to make actually at another constructor. All right, so this is kind of a, a multi-process. So because of that, I'm actually going to say for your recipe, how about you make me biomass out of leaves right here, okay? And then that's what it's going to do. And then I'm going to push F, I'm going to pipette this, and I'm going to put it, um, well, I would put it here, okay? But normally what I'd do is just build two of these and... You want to eventually build up so you're automating everything, okay? But what I'm going to do for the time being is I'm just going to run out and collect enough leaves so that I can um, build my own biomass bricks to make the fuel. And then I'm just going to switch the recipe instead of building um, a separate facility because we need a bunch of stuff first. Now, once we get power more easily maintained, then, and everything is building and thrumming along, then I'm gonna start scaling up. And what you really wanna be doing is pretty much having every single thing being built as much as you can, because you need every resource in this game. And you will start to see as you play and as you get more comfortable, like which ones you need more of or where the bottlenecks emerge. And that's kind of the fun of the game is like, building up your factory and seeing where the problems are to your efficiency and your productivity and redressing those problems with better factory design, better technology, better distribution and, um, you know, proportion of creation of resources. So with all of these uh, leaves that we're gathering here, we should be able to make enough. Okay, I'm going to go back. Uh-huh. All right. Then just check the map, and yep, we're right on cue. Hi, big guy. How you doing? All right. So from here, what we want to do is make sure that we can make the biomass bricks from grass. So I'm going to um, say, all right, we're making biomass here. So I'm just going to shift click these leaves right into the constructor. I'm not going to feed it anything. Okay. And it needs power. So we will just connect a power line like this over to uh, the pole that we just built right here. Uh, I mean, the floor is too steep. You know, just get this. There we go. Yep. All right. And then I'm going to give this guy some power. Oops, wrong dude. Here we go. 
This guy. And then let's see. It's going. These are on. Okay. And let's just see how the power is going. Flower petals actually burn pretty efficiently. And we're going to go over here. And you can see the biomass coming out. And if you want to make, okay, biofuel, it it takes eight biomass. All right, so we already have enough biomass. Okay, so what I'm going to do is um, just let this completely finish. There it goes. Um, and I'm going to take out these leaves. And take out this biomass, and then I'm going to change the recipe over to biofuel. And I'm going to feed in um, the relevant item with shift-click, and we're going to just let this make biofuel. And you can see it's already making it. Um, and you can just kind of push E to pick it up off your belt. And then I can shift over to my chainsaw, and you see I have two stacks of power for it, so it's already working. I'm actually going to take out all of this biomass and just walk over with my chainsaw now. And you see these giant palm trees, okay? You just point the chainsaw at it. It will get the white outline. When you have the tree selected, you can see the white outline around it. And you just hold left click to chop right through it. And you see I just got 135 leaves and 33 wood from one tree, okay? Um, and I actually chopped down everything in the area. So there's like a little bit of area of effect on this. And you don't have to run around just picking up individual leaves, even from this little tree, okay? That gave me 21 leaves and 4 wood. And the real thing that you're looking for here is, is wood. Wood is amazing, but what we're going to be doing is making biofuel from now on. So what I like to do, okay, is I'm just going to chop all of this. And this is the life. You see this? Um, now you can go around and chop down any tree that you want and get a ton of biofuel from it, okay? Um, you can also chop down this coral and get limestone, mycelia, all kinds of other resources. So this chainsaw is uh, a huge upgrade for us, all right? Now, this structure is going to be making biomass. We want biofuel, but we need to basically give it biomass to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to temporarily um, just make this only a um, biomass wood burner. And I'm going to give it uh, all of the wood that we've got. And it's going to start churning that out for us. I'm going to open this up, take this out like that. Okay. And now um, we have a chainsaw and can start redoing our power configurations by going over here and, for example... Um, giving it, I'm right-clicking to split the stack. If I just give this two pieces of biofuel, look how slowly this will burn through. And this is how we can start to get all of our systems thrumming along nicely by using um, biofuel to burn. Now, what you're going to want to do is uh, probably make a constructor that is producing biomass from wood and one from leaves and then have them uh, feed, okay, into a storage container, and then get yourself a constructor that makes biomass itself, um, or biofuel, rather, and it will take both biomass from wood or leaves, it doesn't care, and draw it out of this container and have it constantly going. And we'll talk about um, how to merge and split lanes next time, because that is our next objective, which is logistics to complete. But I wanted to show you how to get biofuel online with a chainsaw because it will save you so much time and allow you to experiment and explore more. So everyone, um, I hope you found this episode to be useful. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.